Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit more about Endeavor OS, which I've talked about previously. A lot of the developers on the old Antargos Linux, which went to belly up and died, moved on over to Endeavor OS, and they have produced what is probably one of the greatest Linux builds that, that there is for Arch, uh, one of the greatest Arch installers. Very simple, easy Arch install. It's not a whole lot more than Arch with maybe a few extra tools. Well, this is their anniversary edition, so we have to say happy birthday to Endeavor OS. And in this anniversary edition, they've introduced a few new tools to really help the management of your system go well. And so we want to talk a little bit about some of these tools here. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at their post first. So this is the, the post information that we have. So uh, it talks about the first anniversary ever. Woohoo! coming on down the line. They got new servers, a lot of cool things going on in the background. We had some learning curves. And then now we're going to get into a couple tools. And these are so amazing for what they, you know, really some of the forethought going into this. First tool we have is package cleanup configuration. This is very important because as you're installing, particularly if you're creating a system that you have a separate boot partition, a separate home partition, all these types of things. When you update your system, you'll have a lot of old Linux headers and other things laying around in there. And then you you may not even think to check that partition and clean it out and it will eventually get full and then your system will just stop working. And I've experienced this in a lot of different places like um, uh, AWS EC2 cloud servers, for example, are notorious for constantly filling in that you need to get in there at least every few months and clean out all those old headers or your system will just fail to work right. And uh, so the package cleanup tool is a system that you can set up to do either daily, weekly, or monthly. And you can set how many pass configurations and it's going to auto remove everything except the latest three known good versions. So it's a very excellent management tool to help you streamline your system and prevent your system from, from going haywire and wonky on you. Now, the next tool that they have built in, which you do need to install, is the Arch Kernel Management Tool. This is going to allow you to manage and maintain a variety of different Linux kernels. It shows you the available ones, what is installed. You can add and you can remove the kernels that are available so that you can actually switch very quickly between your kernels without doing a lot of difficult work. And then the third tool, this one's actually used to customize the welcome menu. This is the personal commands tool, which is not a, an easy button, as they say here. Uh, it is a tool that allows you to create and deploy a welcome, a separate tab in the welcome menu. So uh, maybe in an enterprise environment or multiple different computer systems where you're wanting to do certain tasks, you can put these inside the welcome menu and then you can just load it up and just simply click the button and do it. Whether you create a, a task for R-syncing or you're creating browsers with tabs or, or a variety of other things, you can do a lot of cool things. This one's not as easy to function and work with. Uh, but nevertheless, it is uh, it is certainly a, a great application. So I want to just go ahead and head on over into the desktop there of Endeavor OS just to kind of show you how all of these tools work. So here we are, and I just installed Budgie, and in the course of time that uh, I installed this and played with it, which was less than a half an hour, we already have upstream updates. Thank you, Arch. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, moving on. We want to start with the welcome screen on all of these. So it is going to display until you hit this do not show me anymore button, but you can always find it and reboot it inside of the... Uh, inside of the, the menu there. Now, the package cleanup configuration is already set on the system at install. So if you click in this guy here, you can kind of see what you're doing. You can uh, package cache usage is 1.2 gigs. Uh, free space on disk is 26. So you can see it's going to modify the um, uh, modify the Pac-Man cache periodically. So it's going to clean things out, prevent the boot system from getting overwhelmed with things. So you can set it to daily, weekly, or monthly, and then you can set the number of package versions to keep. So uh, this is excellent if you're going to want to, uh, if you're like living on the edge here and you're just like, no, just keep nothing, man. I want to live on the edge. You got that choice. Or you can just say, eh, I'm extra cautious, man. Give me like 10 past versions because, yeah, you know, whatever you want to do. So you can set it up to clean everything except whatever you specify, either the daily, the weekly, or the monthly.
Now, the next one under the Add More Apps. Now, my personal commands tab is not going to be there for you unless you enable it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But under the Add More Apps screen, you now have the A Kernel Manager available to install. This is not installed on the system by default, but it is enabled uh, right over here. Just click that button and you get the AKM tool in the menu. So you can find it and uh, install this in the AKM tool here. <clears throat> So you can see here that uh, the kernels we have enabled. So the default that it comes with is 578 Arch 1-1. So you can see the stable testing mainline. And I actually went ahead and I installed the hardened. Just install and uninstall just by clicking on your... Uh, your options here. If you can add other things to this menu, uh, you'd probably have to do that separately, but then you can set what is, enable, uh, what is enabled by default. So you can run the basic Linux, you can run the Linux LTS, you can run the Linux Zen, because I'm feeling Zen, baby, or you can do the Linux Hardened. So I'm actually running right now on the Linux Hardened. So if I boot in, whoa, if I boot in a terminal there, and I go into a uname R, you can see them running the 579A1 hardened kernel. That's the kernel we are on. That's not the default kernel on Endeavor OS. The basic uh, non-LTS version is, but uh, you can actually run that and you can choose them. So if you just kind of click on these guys here, let me just go ahead, we'll go ahead and feel, I'm feeling Zen. So just basically add these guys here, click okay. It's gonna load up a terminal. You're gonna have to enter your password. And then yes, you wanna proceed with the installation. Now it's gonna go ahead and run through your installation process. And then on the next reboot, you can choose which Linux kernel to go into. The downside is it really doesn't tell us which kernel it is if I re were to reboot the system. Um, both of them shows and displays as pretty much exactly the same uh, the same kernel in the titles. So that's a little bit of a problem, but uh, I'm sure that we can figure that out. My guess is the top one, it's going to go in, in reverse order. So if I were to reboot the machine, and uh, let's just go ahead and reboot the machine when this is done running, then uh, what it's probably going to do is the very first one's going to be the Zen, the second one's going to be the Hardened, and the third one's going to be the the basic it does have possible missing firmware um, but we'll uh, we'll kind of work with that as we go um, let's go ahead and uh, suspend that in our moment of time while it's uh, continuing to do its thing and let's talk about the personal commands now you're first going to get to the personal commands by clicking on the tutorial personal commands button inside of the tips tag okay when you boot this up it's going to head on over to the uh, GitHub page where it's going to walk you through the command syntax. Basically, this all works with a single configuration file in your .config folder in your home directory. So that's going to be easy enough. And then it just kind of walks you through what you're doing. So we have the field. This is basically for the field button. And then you have a separate field here, which is going to indicate what is going to be loaded. So this command here simply opens an instance of Firefox. They have a few other uh, examples down here. So this one here is going to open up the the forum. It's going to open up Firefox, and then it's going to open up the, um, or I guess it opens up whatever your default browser is to forum.endeavorOS.com. They have an example here, which gives you mouse pad, uh, Firefox button and the kernel manager tool. Now on this system here, I do not have mousepad installed. So I actually just edited this command here and I changed it from mousepad to just your basic uh, gedit text editor. And then I just needed to change this guy over here to say gedit. So if I were to go to the personal commands button now, we still have the tutorial there. We have the text editor. So this guy here is just gonna open up the text editor. We have a button to open up the Firefox web browser, just to a default, and then we have this one opens up your kernel manager again. So that's all done within the file. Let me go ahead and show you, whoop, press enter to close that window. Let me go ahead and uh, boot up the terminal again, and I'll show you what that file looks like. All right, so it's just uh, .config slash welcome dash own dash commands .config. So you can see here that our 
uh, we our three buttons here. We have our AKM as our first button. This is where I edited it just to say text editor instead of mouse pad. And then we're opening up gedit from the menu. That's the text editor that I have installed here. And then this is, of course, the Firefox. So we could have uh, copied the commands over to open a certain web page if you wanted to. If you're running custom scripts, you could call your custom scripts. So there's a lot of different tools and things that you can do. All right, so oh, let's cancel out of that. And uh, let's go ahead and reboot the system and see what those kernels look like now that we are done. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are. Okay, never mind. It do, does actually give us our, our titles. I did not see these last time Last time they were here, but uh, I stand corrected. So here's our Linux Zen, here's our Linux Hardened, and here's our basic Linux. So let's go ahead and see if Zen actually boots. I know the other two do, but let's see if Zen boots. And we appear to have a working system. And let's go ahead and double check our, uh, our kernel here. And we are running the Zen kernel, so we're feeling pretty Zen. So uh, there we have it. Um, there is some excellent new tools coming down the pipeline for the one-year anniversary of the Endeavor OS. Excellent tools to help manage your Arch system very well. Uh, very much kudos to the Endeavor OS team. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.